Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at reporting category number five for the Algebra 1 EOC State of Texas 2018 version. So there are six problems we're going to go through today, all from reporting category number five, which is all about exponential functions. So let's get started. Number four, which statement about the graph of y equals 8 times 0.25 raised to the power of x is true so we just need to go through our answer choices the coordinates of the x-intercept are 0 0.250 nope I can all obviously there's not going to be an x-intercept and any exponential function in algebra 1 in Texas because our graphs in the state of Texas in algebra 1 for exponential functions your asymptote is always going to be y equals 0 which is our x-axis, which means our function will never cross our x-axis, which means we won't have an x-intercept. The second uh, answer choice, the coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, 8. That is correct. Your a value is your y-intercept at your starting point. So your answer is g. Number 17, there are 1,024 players in a tennis tournament. In each round, half the players are eliminated. Which function can be used to find the number of players remaining in the tournament at the end of X rounds? This is typically more difficult for some students. Um, if there are 1,024 players and each round half are being eliminated, then that's, a, that's consistent. Every single round, 50% of the players are eliminated, which gonna, is going to show you that it's exponential decay. Okay. So 50%, which is half as a decimal, is 0.5. That's our rate as a decimal. So if we start out with 1,000, and remember, we know it's exponential because our rate is a percent. Okay, so y equals a times b to the power of x. We are starting out with 1,024 players, and we are decreasing by 1 half every time half of the amount every single time which looks like this this is exponential decay i take one and i subtract the rate as a decimal and then i'm going to simplify it 1024 times 0.5 to the power of x which one of these answer choices shows that b so now if i were to go through and maybe eliminate some answer choices I know that half of the players are being eliminated, which means it's going down. The number of players is decreasing. So if let's say I don't really know how to set up my equation, I might look at this and know that's growth. It's not going to be that. That's growth. It's not going to be that. And then at that point, if you still can't come up with your equation, then you choose between B and D. But you've increased your chances of getting the answer correct from 25% to 50%, so that's good. Number 23, what appears to be the domain, x values, of the part of the exponential function graphed on the grid? What's the domain? We're looking at our x values. Can we eliminate any answer choices? Sure, we can eliminate b and we can eliminate d because these have y in there. So you need to make sure you know your academic vocabulary. Domain is your set of x values. How far left to how far right is my function going? Well, negative 1 is the most leftist point. Positive 3 is the most rightest point, And x is everything in between those two points. So if you can't even come up with your inequality symbols, can we at least eliminate another answer choice? Sure, we can eliminate c. But if x is between these two points, your inequalities always point to the left. And we're including those points, so we're going to have a line underneath. X is less than or equal to this amount, and it's greater than or equal to this amount. So we've got our compound inequality. Moving on to 33. In the year 1900, the total number of metric tons of copper produced in the world was 495,000. Each year since 1900, the total number of metric tons of copper produced has increased on an average by about 3.25% over the amount produced the previous year. So it's increasing at a rate, exponential growth. 
automatically. That's what I'm thinking. It's increasing at a rate. Which function models the total number of metric tons of copper produced in the year that is X years since 1900? So if we know it's exponential growth, then Y equals A times B to the power of X. I at least know this number right here is going to be greater than 1. So can you eliminate any answer choices? Sure, I can eliminate B. And I can eliminate C because we haven't seen anything that looks like this. Your variable is the exponent in an exponential function. Oh, same here. Hmm, what do you know? What's my answer? It's A. Okay, and if I walk through this, if we start, the total number of metric, metric tons of copper produced in the world was this amount. That's our initial amount, 495,000. If it increases 3.25%, well, what is 3.25% as a decimal? It's 0 0.0325. So my function would be y equals 495,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0325 raised to the power of x. And 1, 1 plus 0 0.0325 is 1.0325. Let's move on. Number 40. Which graph best represents f of x equals 2? times five to the power of x. Graph it on your calculator. Absolutely graph it. Now, if you do know this right here is your initial amount, that's your y-intercept, could you eliminate any answer choices? Sure, I could eliminate h. That does not have zero two as my y-intercept. Zero 010, anything else? I can eliminate j, it's not gonna be that one. 0, 5 is the y-intercept for that one. So then, if we graph this on our graphing calculator and then look at your table of values because you want to make sure that points match, I might look at my graph or my graphing calculator when I graph that. Look at my table of values. 0, 2 is a point on this graph. What about 1, 10? That is also a point on my calculator. This does not have that. This has one five. Nope, not the answer. F is my answer, okay? All right, I believe this is the last one for 2018. Scientists are studying a bacteria sample. The function f of x equals 245 times 1.12 raised to the power of x gives the number of bacteria in the sample at the end of x days. Which statement is the best interpretation of one of the values in this function? Okay, we just need to go through this and see what we're given, okay? So I know whoop, that my starting amount is gonna be 245. That's my starting point, or that's my initial amount. And then right here shows me that it's definitely gonna be growth, okay? But a lot of students are like, what am I even looking at? Where do I start? f of x equals is just fancy schmancy for y equals, so a good starting point is to plug it into y equals. Okay, so which statement is the best interpretation? The initial number of bacteria is 12. No, the initial amount is 245. The initial number of bacteria decreases at a rate of 88% each day. No, this is actually showing growth, so it's not going to decrease. H, the number of bacteria increases at a rate of 12% each day. Well, let's see. If I do 1.12 minus 1, I get 0.12 as a decimal. If I convert that back to a percent, that's 12%. That's a growth of 12%. H is my answer. And that concludes your review for reporting category number five, 2018 version of your Algebra 1 EOC. I hope it was helpful.